Okay, good morning. I hope y'all are doing really well. I'm so excited to be talking about the liver today. <laughs> that sounds very funny. But the liver is a very big part of our body. So down below in the comments, give me a heart or a thumbs up or something and let me know that you're excited about learning about the liver. It's going to be so great. Um, let me know if you've had problems with your liver. Do you, have you ever like, really thought about the liver a whole lot? There's a lot of times, you know, growing up, like nobody ever said anything about a liver cleanse or anything about the liver. I mean, it wasn't until I was grown and just in the last few years have I really discovered all of these things that our body does, you know, and the different things and like what the liver itself does. Like it is an amazing organ and really and truly like we talk about gut health a lot and our gut is highly, highly important. Our gut is what keeps us well. That is what, where all the disease comes from. If you're not putting into your body the things that need to be there and all the environmental things that are being just thrown at us every day and everything's just being filtered through our body constantly and our gut's like that main part like it's having to break down the food it's having to do all of these different functions and you know if it's loaded with um extra oh, that's in my, um if it's loaded with all kinds of nasty yucky stuff then that in itself is bad for the gut and which causes problems all over our body but our liver is a part of our body that actually filters everything. The liver is where everything has to go first and it helps to get rid of of everything. Well, I mean, you think about all the things that are coming into your body every single day. You've got um, if whatever you've drank, whatever you're eating, all of the toxins. Now, little side note here, all the toxins, even shampoo, all of the things we clean our house with, everything, when you walk out the door, there's toxins that's just airborne, that are just in the air that's coming into you. When you're drinking water, even the water is not completely clean. So we've got all of these things that's having to come into our body. Our liver has to work constantly to clean those things out. And when it's not cleaning out like it's supposed to, it's getting overtaxed. It's getting overwhelmed and it's got too much work that it's trying to do. And it cannot do everything it's supposed to do if it's clogged up. It's very easy for your liver to get clogged up and to not be able to function the way it needs to. One thing um, that really bothers me that I had not ever really thought about is all of the, the things that we don't even think about every day. You know, like we eat the food that's there you know, we go to the store, we buy the food. There's so many xenoestrogens, which is fake estrogen, fake hormones that are in the foods that we eat. All of these things are being pulled into our body. Like we're holding on to that and your liver's having to do something with that. Well, it can only do so much and it can only filter so much. So when it gets clogged, it's not pretty. So one of the things that we can do to make that better, of course, is to do a liver cleanse. There's a lot of different things that you can do to help cleanse your body. Now, I had never realized that there are liver stones. There are actual, excuse me, you're, there are actually um, stones that come out, just like a kidney stone or a gallbladder stone. There are liver stones. And when you are doing a liver cleanse, those stones should come out because those are the things that are clogging up. Those like things are just piling up in there and they're kind of getting stuck. And so when we're not eating a good healthy diet, then those things just kind of like sit there and they don't get pulled out like they're supposed to. So when we do a cleanse, it allows our body to get rid of those things. Now, what are some of those things that we can do? I'm going to give you 10 very quick things. These are things that you probably do all the time anyway. But a lot of this is going to be in order of how you do all of these things. I mean, like we may do these things sporadically here and there, but are we doing them in the, in the right way? Another thing that we have to think about is the fact that our liver has over 500 different functions. 
I've never realized how much our, our liver really truly affects every little part of our body, but our metabolism, the enzyme production and, and how our enzymes in our body works, all of those things need to be working together and everything needs to be working in the order it's supposed to work in. So I'm going to name all the things really quick and then we'll kind of go back and figure out what we can do to make all of these work for us better. So garlic is number one. It's a minimal, um, it contains selenium, which is a mineral that helps to detoxify the liver. So it's a very good thing. And, you know, I, I love garlic, but I don't always use garlic on a lot of things. So you have to kind of be creative to find what you can put garlic on. Which I put it even in my green beans, so I don't know. Um, citrus fruits, things like um, grapefruit, orange, lime, lemon, any of the citrus fruits are really good for helping your liver. Now, lemon in itself is a detoxer, and um, grapefruit actually helps to eat fat. So whenever you're eating those kind of things or doing those kind of things, that, that's very helpful for your body anyway. And then vegetables, the coriferous cor, cor, um Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, those are very good and they, um, they're they very detoxifying and they help to clean out that area as well. Any kind of green, leafy green vegetable. Uh, turmeric is very good. Now turmeric is, um, that's one of those things that I never really thought about using very much, but it works really well when you put it with lemon and you kind of make like a little lemonade and put a little bit of turmeric in with your lemonade and you make a little drink out of it and that's very good because it it works on all of those functions walnuts they are very high in the amino acid arginine and it assists the liver in detoxifying ammonia so that's really good and it is high in omega-3 fatty acids which is you know good for cleaning the liver as well beets Beets are not my favorite. Don't like them, but a lot of people do. But it is very cleansing in the blood. So beets are very good to help get the waste and break down toxic waste to help them to excrete quicker. So um, there are some different juices that you can put the beets in and make like a drink out of it so it tastes better. Carrots are high in plant uh, flavonoids and beta, beta carotene, which stimulates and supports the liver function as well. So Carrots are very good. Green tea, very liver benefiting drink of green tea, which I thought was a little bit surprising. Apples are very good. Now, apples are my most favorite thing ever. <laughs> I used to eat an apple every single morning for breakfast, and I don't do that. Now I hardly ever eat breakfast. But apples are a mainstay. Like, apples really are good for your body, very good for your liver. It helps to clean your gut. Very amazing for your gut. Um, and then avocados is number 10. Avocados are basically a superfood. It cleanses your arteries. It helps bodily, your body to naturally produce uh, glutamine and um, helps the liver rid itself of any toxins. So that, to me, is a huge benefit. So how can we take those and really put them into a perspective of cleaning your liver? Now, when you are cleaning your liver, you want to be as minimal on the things that you're eating as possible. You don't want to overtax it with meat. You don't want to overtax it with, like, you want to make sure you're drinking good quality water, that you're not just getting water out of a faucet, but that you're getting, like, um, like filtering of some sort, whether you buy one of the little things to filter or a cup, a bottle water, water bottle that filters, something that's going to have good water in it that you're you're not just going to be drinking water that's coming out of the faucet because that's going to not really benefit you all the way around. These 10 things, now I know it seems crazy. I mean, like you can't really put all these things together and go, oh, I had this great meal. But you really can, like you can think about a salad. Make a big salad. Put your broccoli, your cauliflower, put your walnuts. Don't eat meat while you're doing this cleanse. Um plan around a good week to do your cleanse and really think about it. And actually you need to do a liver cleanse before you do any other type of cleanse. Like don't go cleaning your gut. Now some of these things kind of work hand in hand. Like lemon is very good to clean um, 
detoxify the whole body in general, but you want to do a liver cleanse first and really focus on that first before you do any other type of cleanse simply because your body actually reabsorbs all of the stuff. If your liver is not functioning the way it's supposed to and it's not getting rid of everything like it needs to, then you're reabsorbing all of those same toxins back into your body. So you're really not doing yourself any good doing a cleanse if you're not going to get rid of the nasty that's there. So the because your liver is that that filter, it'd be like having the filter on the faucet and water's just keeping on coming through that filter, but, but now it's all grimy and it's nasty. You're still not getting good quality water. You have to clean, clean out that filter. You have to change the filter in order to get good quality water again. So it's the same thing with your liver. Your liver is filtering out all of the toxins, all the nasty. So clean that out first, get it feeling good, and that's gonna help you sleep. It's going to help your body function the way it needs to. It's going to help you to lose weight. It's going to help you to um, have a clearer mind and have mental clarity a little bit better. All of these things are going to come simply by doing this one act of a week. So don't take it as this little light, oh, let me just do this little thing. It's really a very important thing. But you can take each one of these things, like you can cut up the carrots on your salad. Like I know you'll be tired of salads by the time it's over, but at least it's food. <laughs> But don't eat the meats. The meats are going to be a lot heavier and a lot harder on your liver. You want anything that's going to be very gentle on your liver, but that's also going to help pull out and, and get rid of all of the, the stones that may be in there or any extra stuff that does not need to be there. It's going to help get rid of all of those extra things. Once you've done all that, then you can move on to the next thing. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about now, this may seem a little weird. Um, it took me a little while to get my head wrapped around this idea. Now, if you're feeling sluggish, um, symptoms of, of a liver needing to be cleansed are sensitivity to chemicals and odors, bitter taste in your mouth, especially after a meal, hemorrhoids or varicose veins, consuming alcohol or recovering from alcohol lit, um, abuse, history of hepatitis, history of drug abuse, long-term use of prescription meds or over-the-counter meds. So that means even if you are doing a lot of Tylenol and ibuprofen, like you're trying to keep down inflammation and you're, I mean, even if it's just something over-the-counter, all of those things have chemicals in them. And all of those things are taxing on your liver. That's taxing on your body in general. Your body cannot function when it's got so much disease going on in there. Pain under your right rib cage. Uh, aspartame consumption. So if you drink a lot of Diet Cokes or anything with diet or um, sweet and low, things like that, um, this would be a good thing. If you know you're in, your hormones are imbalanced, if you have thyroid issues, those kind of things, sugar imbalance, like a high or low blood sugar, like you tend to like get that really weak feeling or that, um, or you know you've already got diabetes or you're on that verge or whatever or if you have a lot of allergies those are all the things that you need to think about going ahead and doing a liver cleanse if you have those things going on your it's doing a liver cleanse is really going to help so many of your issues it's, it's amazing even your endocrine system so many things so when you look at um this this is something that i never really realized or thought about okay so um, each of our organs, now this is going to be something that's a little bit weird, but each of our organs have an opposite organ. Every day at certain times of the day, you have your organs, certain organs are working at their highest. They're awake and they're working. While certain organs are really working, there's others that are asleep or at least cozy. They're just sitting down here not really doing a whole lot. And then as the time passes, the other starts working and other organs fall asleep. So for example, kidneys, these are called opposites, um, opposite organs. Each organ has an opposite. Each organ has a, another organ that works with it in conjunction. So for example, the kidneys are asleep between um, 5 and 7 p.m. So during that time, the large intestines 
at the opposite extreme from 5 to 7 a.m. I'm sorry, sorry. I said that backwards. The kidneys are awake from 5 to 7 uh, p.m. So during that time, at the opposite time, at between 5 and 7 a.m., the large intestines are awake. So that would mean that the kidneys would be asleep. And while the kidneys are awake, the large intestines are asleep. Now, I know that sounds really crazy. So like early, early in the morning, your intestines are doing, they're just kind of doing their job. They're just kind of asleep. They're, they're just there. But your kidneys in the evening are working harder. So when you look at these chart, this chart, when you look at your liver, your liver is awake between 1 and 3. Now, we know that a lot of times our body is working harder in the middle of the night to repair itself from the day. It's That's why we have to have sleep. We have to relax. We have to be able to get good quality sleep so that our body can function the way it needs to. So, when your liver is awake between 1 and 3, your small intestines are awake from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. So, why does this matter? When your liver, I mean... You're not going to wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning to try to go do something to help your liver. These times are the best times for working on that particular organ because that's that's their little window. So if you're working on, uh, like in this case, with the liver and the small intestines, the small intestines is the opposite from the liver. So it's awake during the afternoon. So you can do things for your liver during that prime time of the small intestines being good and awake. Because it's its opposite, then the things that you do during that time is really going to affect your liver at the same time. So that means that you're not having to wake up at one o'clock in the morning to really do something great for your liver. You can do it in the afternoon at the same, same time, parallel time, but it's just in the daytime and not at night. So. What are things that we can do to help the liver? Now, not only are we going to do our cleanse, but we also can do a lot of other things. Now, when you're looking at it from a whole, like, I try my hardest to not have to do anything that requires medication, over-the-counter medication, or any kind of antibiotics or anything like that, because all those things stay in your body for an extremely long period of time and they do not cleanse out they do not go away easily or quickly so you want to do things that are as minimal invasive to your body as possible and to keep your body as healthy as it can be so a lot of times um i use tons of supplements i use tons of essential oils now not all essential oils are created equal there are a lot that are synthetic so you don't do not buy any over-the-counter like at Walmart or Target or whatever because those are synthetic they've got chemicals added to them and they've got fragrance added to them they're not good for your body it's gonna soak into your body and it's gonna cause more problems you're not doing yourself any good so get a good quality oil I only use Young Living but you can use um, there are some others just put just please 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 do your research and make sure that you are getting one that does not have like know how they are taking care of the plants how it's being distilled and that it is a therapeutic grade essential oil that it's not just something random you know that you're not just grabbing something off the shelf young living make sure that everything is completely pure it does not have any chemicals added to it it's distilled only one time so you get the very highest th therapeutic grade that there is. So there are a lot of different oils that you can use to help in the process of your or um, and or supplements that you can help in this process. So like if you, um, a lot of times so many things are held in our body because of the emotions that we hold on to. So not only is the food affecting our body, but also our emotions and the things that we think and we do every single day also affect every part of our body. Anger is held in the liver. So if there's anything that you're holding on to at any given time, that's where it's going to be stored. So you need to clear out that, that negative energy and that negative, those negative feelings of fear and anger, rage, um, any of those negative emotions need to be gone. So these are some things that you can do. If you know that your negative 
emotions. Now, sometimes you want, may not even feel like you are angry, but there may be certain things that just really ramp you up at different th times, and it may be something silly, and then you're like, well, why did that even make me mad? Like, I've done so many times, like, well, that was kind of stupid to get mad at. You know, later looking back and think, well, that was goofy. Why did I go crazy over that? But when you're holding on to something, sometimes you don't even know that you're holding on to it. So it's there. So think about, um, really be aware of your feelings and be aware of where you are with yourself and know what your feelings are. Sometimes it's really hard to have to pull up those feelings or if you know that there's something that you've kind of held on to that you keep pushing it back down. Sometimes we know what those things are. We just don't want to admit it. So really think about it. Allow that feeling to come up. Allow it to be there and to be aware of it. And then you can start working on it. So find that negative emotion, anger, rage, um, justifying, even justifying something, uh, chronic complaints, like just being a complainer all the time, that you're just always irritated about something. If you're just mad and you don't even know why. Think about then having a positive emotion. You want the opposite of that. So write out, if you're angry, you've got your negative feeling of anger, rage, whatever, but you want to do the opposite of that. So while you are in the middle of the day, like your one to three time that your small intestines are awake and your liver's kind of resting, that's a perfect time because then your liver can soak up the goodness. Soak up whatever it is that you're doing extra because it's gonna soak it up. It's gonna help your small intestines too, but it's gonna also really work on that that organ that's asleep at that time. So from that one to three time, then you're going to really focus on positive emotions, forgiveness, love, accountability, gratitude, realizing, um, you know, kids, kids tend to be a lot more of this than adults do. But I mean, like by the time you're an adult, you realize that you're always going to have accountability. You've got to be accountable to somebody if you're working or whatever, you've got somebody that you have to be accountable to. Kids always think, oh, well, I'm a grown-up, so I don't have to be accountable to anybody anymore. And, you know, it hits them really fast that, sorry, that's live. You know, you're always going to have somebody that you have to tell where you're at or why you're not at work or whatever. You always have to be accountable. So learning to be okay with that, so that positive emotion of having that accountability and being okay with that accountability. And affirmations, I choose forgiveness I let go of past hurts and anger. I choose health and wholeness. I am accountable for my actions and choices. I am grateful for my teachers in my life. So think about those things. Write those things out. And while you are in that middle of the day, like after you've eaten lunch or whatever, try to find a moment of quietness during that time. And and even if you don't know that you've got anger or, or any of these issues, if you know your liver, like you're tired and you're you're, you feel like your body's overtaxed, then there's probably something there. So go ahead and do these affirmations. Think about the positive thoughts and go ahead and do those things anyway. Try to set some time between that one and three time to just sit down and think about these positive emotions and keep putting them back into your mind. Keep flowing those through. If you want to use oils or um, um, any kind of supplements to help in this process as well. As well, oils that are good is Juva Cleanse, which is and Juva Flex. Those are very good for your liver. They're good for cleansing. You can rub it just on. Um, oh, I'm thinking kidneys. Rub it on your liver area, um, and do that during those times. That one to three time. Release is really good. Release actually helps to get rid of the anger. It will help bring those feelings up. I know a lot of times we don't want to have to bring those feelings up. But it brings those up and it really helps to release that and get it out. But while you're rubbing release on, think of the positive things because you want to release the good into your life. I release, I choose forgiveness. I let go of the past. So think about um, the positive. Don't, don't say I'm releasing anger. No, because you're going to release more anger out. You don't want to do that. You want to release the positive. So think about the good things. Um, transformation, hope, surrender. Now, surrender makes you tired. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that one do not use until late in the evening because you will be exhausted like it. It wears me out. Like it, and I really think 
because it's it's surrender it's taking away your fight like you want to fight for your control it takes that fight away and it just you're supposed to relax you're supposed to just give up give it all up and that's what um, and that's what we end up doing with with surrender it just gives it all up and then lastly there is the juva tone which is also good anything juva is good for your your liver those are specifically in GLF which is a gallbladder liver function those are all good for your liver those are very specific to young living so you can't find those anywhere else but um, which are so of the blends like release and forgiveness all those those are blends um, and then allerzyme allerzyme is which is good for allergies but allergies as we know is a buildup of um, a lot of yeast and things like that so that helps to alleviate a lot of that yeast another one that I absolutely love is called parafree and it's just capsules you take but also it kills parasites and parasites you think about it like pair of sites like like it's a double-minded when you're like feeling very um, un unable to fo focus or having a mental breakdown of your thought patterns and things like that a lot of times we have yeast that's in our body that is like that's a parasite growing because it's something that's not supposed to be there so when you use parafree it helps to bring that site back to into unison and get together we're going to talk about that on another video but that really helps bring your your mind and, and thoughts into unison again and it gets rid of those parasites like yeast and things like that and it really helps your body to feel better so that's a good one too while you're doing a liver cleanse as well so there's a lot of different things that you can do if you do not have oils and you just really don't care <laughs> about that kind of thing or having to do that you can still do plenty with eating just eat a very wholesome diet do not eat any meat go vegetarian for a week and allow your body to get rid of all of those toxins and all those extra things you really need to not be using a whole lot of extra chemicals within your home as well if you can alleviate like don't clean your house for, for the week or whatever you know try to not have to use a lot of chemicals because that's just going to overload even more try to be as as nothing as possible for a few days and allow your body to heal itself and to feel better so I hope this is helpful if you have questions just ask below and I will get back with you if um, you want to know more let me know and I can send you more information so I'll talk to you later I love y'all bye